Are you glad you made it to church today? Man, y'all, I am, I am pumped. Can I tell you, I, I got this word a couple weeks ago and I woke up this morning on fire praying for you. I have been praying for you since I got up this morning when my little girl woke me up way too early this morning. I have been praying for you. If you're watching online, if you're here in the room, let me tell you, can you just take a second, every distraction, put it aside. Whatever issue you're thinking about, it's still gonna be there after the next couple minutes. Whatever you got going on, focus. Because I believe if you really lean in today, God's got something for your life. Something that can help you conquer whatever it is that's in front of you. He has breakthrough in store for you. So whatever it is, put it out of sight. Let me tell you, if you're wanting a reservation, there's none available anyway. You can go home and cook after service. God's got something in here and it's too important. If you never take notes, take notes. If you never pay attention, try paying attention. Give me five minutes. Give me a couple minutes of your time, let me tell you, because God's got something he wants to share with you today. And I'm so honored to be here. Can we just start, can we honor our lead pastor, Pastor Aaron and Katie? They are incredible. Can I tell you, them and our leadership team are the same on this stage as they are behind the scenes. They love the Lord. They love you guys. They are just incredible. Their marriages are such an example to John and I, and I appreciate y'all taking a chance on me. When John and I first started coming to Radiant, it was their second Sunday, and we were in college, and he gave us chance after chance after chance, and honestly, Radiant's part of the reason why we're married, so stay in church. You might find your spouse. But man, I am so excited. If you were coming, expecting to hear Pastor Aaron, that's okay. Come back next week. He's much taller than I am. Um, and he will have a word for your life, let me tell you. Um, but if I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, my name is Sarah. I want to take a second and introduce you to my family because they've grown a little bit since last year. Um, that's my baby girl, Riley. She is 14 months, which it, she's just one. It's just easier to say one. If you tell me your daughter is 19 months old, I'm just gonna have to sit there, do the math and feel stupid. Just tell me she's one. So she's one. Um, last time I spoke, it was actually the day she got dedicated, almost a year ago. So um, she's grown a little bit since then. And that's my amazing husband who is the best. There's no words. Someone actually asked me on Instagram to um, say my favorite quality about him. I couldn't, because there's so many and I'm better because of him and he's amazing. And I love you and I'm gonna move on before I get too sappy and sentimental. <laughs> We're going to go a little old school today. Is that okay? We're going back to a Sunday school story. It's the story of Jericho. Say Jericho. If you have a Bible, go to Joshua chapter 6. We're going to read a couple verses. I'm going to pray, and we're going to jump in, hopefully have some fun today. Joshua chapter 6. Let's start with verse 1. It says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out. No one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, say see. Oh, you're with me. Good. See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. Say seven times. Y'all are good with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. Let's pray and then we'll jump in today. Um, if you want to write down the title of my message before we pray, it's how to win your fight. How to win your fight. Let's pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that there is peace, strength, miracles that can be available to us in your presence. Thank you that at the name of Jesus, victory is unlocked, breakthrough comes, that there is power in that name. So God, I pray that over the next couple minutes, we would really listen to what you have to say. I pray that we would leave here equipped and empowered. And God, I pray even changed, whatever we're facing, whatever we're dealing with, whatever that thing is that feels too big, I pray God that you would show yourself faithful. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Can y'all get up for the worship team real quick? They're amazing. They're awesome. All right, so we're going to start off with a little bit of an embarrassing story. You guys can get to know me a little bit. I always love hearing embarrassing stories. Anybody love hearing other people's embarrassing stories? I love them. I thrive on them. So let me tell you an embarrassing story. Um, I, when I was growing up, like probably middle school, early high school, I did Taekwondo for like a couple years. I was dedicated, y'all. Like Monday and Thursday, I went. 
you don't want to catch a girl in an alley, okay? I, I was intense. I did taekwondo, I did jujitsu, and some self-defense. It was super fun. I loved it. Um, and so if you don't know, there's a couple belts before you get to black belt. So I love showing up. First day, you get your white belt. So it's white, yellow, green, purple, brown, brown with the black stripe, and then black in the taekwondo that we were doing. And so I show up, I'm always like super excited, and the instructor tells us, guys, we're going to teach you how to be super strong, and by the end of this, you're going to be able to like, we're going to hold up a a little piece of wood, it was actually a big piece of wood, and you're going to be able to kick through it and chop through it, and I said, I'm in. That sounds like so much fun. I want to learn how to break wood. I want to be like tough and tell all my friends. And so I go through testing and I move from my white belt to my yellow, to my green, purple. I get all the way up. I had my uh, brown belt with a black stripe. And so at this point, we're getting ready for black belt testing. Okay. And so you do this thing called sparring. I don't know if you know what sparring is. So you're like fake fighting with each other to like show your skill set. And so until you get to this point, you can't touch. It's no contact. But now at this point, it is contact. So it's kind of fun because you get to like punch some people. If you have like some issues with people in your class, you're like you and me sparring now. And so it's really fun. Um, But when you're at this point, you don't get to pick who you're sparring against. Your instructor does. So I know, uh-oh, is right. So I, I'm waiting for who I'm going to get paired up with because I'm feeling pretty confident. You know, like I've been doing this a while. I'm pretty good at this. I'm so ready. And I get paired with the one guy in the class I had the biggest crush on. Guys, he was also one of the instructors. He was, ready for this? I was young. He was 12 years older than me. But I thought, it's okay. It's okay. Look, people can look past a decade in a couple years. It's fine. Also, this was middle school, so this is not embarrassing for me to share in front of John now. It was dumb. Um, Anyway, so I get paired up with him, and I'm literally like shaking. I'm like, I can't do this. It felt so scary. And, but then there's also a part of me that was like, he could touch me. Like he has to do contact. So he has to touch me. And so I'm like all kinds of excited and nervous and terrified and embarrassed all at the same time. So we get to position and they say, okay, you can go. I embarrassed myself. I literally couldn't do anything. I just kind of stood there and was like hard eye emoji and like nothing. I couldn't, I, I got hit multiple times. Um, I blocked nothing. I kicked terribly. And at the end, he looked at me, because we've sparred before, um, but just not contact. And he was like, what's wrong with you? Like, this is not like you. You're not on your game. And I couldn't tell him, obviously. And if he's watching right now, it's fine. We're we're married now, and we're moved on, and it's fine. Um, So it's okay. But I think if we're being honest, maybe some of us in here at some point in our life, or maybe right now, you're coming up against something or someone or some situation, and you feel ill-equipped. You feel like you're shaking in your boots a little bit, and it's not because of a crush. Maybe it's you're afraid. Maybe you need a breakthrough that you're like, I can't do this on my own. Like, God, I need you. And you don't know how you're going to win. And this is what Joshua was facing when he looked at Jericho. It was this big guarded city with walls that no one literally came in or out. This was intense, guys. This was, this was intense. And he's coming up against this massive battle, this massive city. And he's got a couple things that he does that I think we can learn from today and see how he won his fight so we can win our fight. Are you guys ready for it? Okay, so the first thing he does, now this is gonna sound very practical, it's not gonna blow your mind, but the ABCs and the practical things are usually the things that we forget to do. So number one, stop to listen. So Joshua sees this big, massive thing, and if we're being honest, there's two groups of people in the room when you see something big coming. The first group, we like rush in and say, we'll figure it out on the go. Let's just figure it out. And I'm strong and I'm independent and I can do this. And you just rush into situations no matter how hard it looks because you're like, I will figure it out. Let's go for it. And then you make a big mess. And you look back and you're like, I wish I would have waited. And then there's the other group though, that you don't rush in. You go to Google, you go to your friends and family. And let's be honest, can we just be vulnerable in the room? None of us actually know what we're doing. You know, like none of us have the perfect words of wisdom and advice. And if you do, no one's asking you because none of us know really what we're doing. So we go to Google, we go to social media, we go to friends that honestly, their lives aren't even ones we want to replicate, but they're easy. So we go to them instead of God. And we go to all these social media things and the government and politics and all these things thinking it can give us the answers. And we think we're in a waiting season, but we're not. We put ourselves in a waiting position trying to make sure we have all the answers first before going forth. 
There's a difference here. Both groups are not doing it correctly. Joshua did. He stopped, but he didn't just stop. He stopped to listen. And he's listening for something intentional. He's not listening for the sky to open up and birds to come down and the perfect answer to his prayers to be dropped before him. He stopped to listen to God's plans because God has a plan. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this or not. He doesn't just have a plan for like your big picture life. He actually has a plan for your every day. He has a plan. And let me tell you a little bit about his plans. Isaiah 55 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We've got to do something, y'all. We've got to stop to listen. And not just stop. You have to actually stop long enough to listen. Let's go. God, what are the plans that you have for me? God, how do, how do you have this worked out so that I can come out on top? How, what do you have in there that I don't understand? Because God's plans will always be better than our own. Amen. God's plans will always be better than Google. They will always be better than our friends. They will always be better than if we look at our past as if we know what we're doing. They'll always be better than social media's plans. They'll always be better. Let me tell you, they're better than influencers, celebrities, anybody you go to. They're great, but they're not God. God's got the perfect plan. Let me tell you a little bit about the plans he has for your life. His plans are to keep you healthy. His plans are for your good. Can I just also say God's plans are for your good. I don't know if you have this picture of God like he's angry or his plans are just to kind of make you embarrassed in front of other people or if you do what he says, it's not really going to work out. Let me let you in on a secret. His plans are for your good every time. He will always work it out for your good. His plans will always lead us to victory, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. His plans will always make sense in the end. Y'all ever heard that expression, hindsight's 2020? Let me tell you, God's vision all the time is 2020. Before you enter the situation, while you're in the situation, while something happens to you that you never asked for or wanted to happen, God's got a plan that will always make sense in the end. So stick it out long enough to get there. And lastly, his plans will push us to community. And I want to touch on this one because Joshua didn't just get plans from God that he could do all by himself. I think that's interesting because he's the leader, right? He's the guy. Everyone's looking to him for, re- for answers and for the reason. God could have just let him do it, but he didn't. He had a plan that involved everybody. So let me challenge you. If you're not on a dream team, go to next steps. If you weren't planning on going to serve day, what are you doing with your Saturday instead? You're probably just laying in bed. Go to serve day on Saturday and show up to community and watch what God wants to do. And so the first thing he did, he stopped to listen and he stopped long enough to listen. I wonder what would happen if we shifted our perspective and just stopped long enough to say, God, what plans do you have? And then just submit it to him yes. and stop trying to figure it out ourselves. So that's the first thing that he did. The set th- second thing Joshua did, which I, it's been blowing my mind recently, guys. I've reread this story. I was raised in church. I was a Sunday school kid. I slept on the pews. I ate all the Cheerios and goldfish from kids ministry. Like my mom is on staff. Like I've read this story multiple times, but this has been wrecking me. In Joshua 6 verse 2, the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Here's the crazy part. Nothing had happened yet. He was looking at Jericho. And God said, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. So number two, you've got to see what you don't currently see. And I know that sounds crazy. You guys have those friends that they can just get you so excited that they get you do anything. And you look back and you're like, why did I do this? Like, why is it 2 a.m. and I'm still hanging out with you? Like, what? You know those people? Anybody have people like that in your life? And if you don't, you're probably that person. Um, So I... And when I was in college, I was a student leader for a little bit in my uh, youth group back home in Pennsylvania. And um, a couple weeks before I went back to school, um, we decided to take the students on this trip to Hershey Park. It's like an amusement park up north. It's super fun. You always get free chocolate, and your girl likes chocolate. So I was like, I will for sure go to Hershey. I will take the challenge. So we get all the kids on the bus, and we go, and we show up. And for some reason, I got in charge of a group of middle school boys. This was my group that I was overseeing. Me. It was crazy. Um, and so they loved roller coasters. And let me tell you something about your girl. I don't do roller coasters. 
I don't do backwards. I don't do upside down. I don't do things I'm not in control of. Because why would I choose to do that? That doesn't make any logical sense to me. My husband loves roller coasters. I don't get you people. Y'all are great. I think it's awesome. I'm not one of you people. So my job the whole day was palling around with these middle school boys, and I would hold all the bags while they ride a roller coaster. I'd be at the end, and I'd make sure they got to the end and didn't meet a girl along the way and was doing who knows what. So that was my job the whole day. So we get to this one ride, though, and it's called the Super Duper Looper. Um, I might, might have a picture of it, might not. There's two big loops, not one, two, two loops, two loops, upside down loops. Okay, just so we're checking here. So we get there and I'm like, okay, you guys know the routine. I'll take all your bags and we'll go. And they were like, oh no, Sarah, you have to come with us. I was like, I actually don't. (laughs) And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. And they're like, you have to come. You're going to go back to college soon. We're going to be so sad. You're going to be gone. Like, we're going to miss you. Like, just do this one thing. And they're literally, like, convincing me through the whole line, which I kept saying, no, no, no. And I get to the ride, and I'm strapped in the ride before I know what's happening. And I'm on this ride, and I literally sat there, and I was like, Lord, I'm going to die. (laughs) And it's these middle school boys' fault. And that's pathetic. Like, that is not the way I want to go. And I ride the ride, and there's a video on YouTube of me somewhere, and it's me screaming the entire time. But the point is, they were so excited that they got me to do something I would have never done on my own. And God comes to Joshua and is getting him all excited, saying, see, I've already delivered Jericho into your hands. So I came here today to get alongside you and say, look, I know you don't see the victory right now, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. I know you don't see the marriage restored right now, but God can still work a miracle. I know you're still sitting in your addiction and you don't think you can ever be free from it, but God is still a delivering God. I know it doesn't make any sense right now, but I need you to see what you don't currently see. There's too much. I think we've gotten so practical, if we're being honest, pragmatic, practical, and reasonable in our faith, in our prayers. And God's really challenged me. I got up sometimes, Lord, help me make it through the day. Amen. Lord, help me make it through the day. Do you need God sometimes for that? If we're being real, we get up, our alarm goes off, we make coffee, we go through our day, and we go home. I I serve a bigger God than that. I say, God, let miracles happen when I enter my workplace. God, let me see breakthrough in my finances. Even though it says zero dollars on my account, I know you're the God who provides. God, help me get that promotion. I know my boss doesn't see me and I know I don't make sense for it, but I know that you can make a way where there seems to be no way. God, help me have a kid. I know we've been trying for so long and it doesn't make sense and doctors keep saying no, but I know, God, you are healer and you are way maker. I came to encourage you to start seeing what you don't currently see. We've got to, we've got to dream again. We've got to dream again. Romans 8, 37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Does it say some of these things? Does it say in a couple of these things? Does it say when you get good enough at this point in life and you're married and have two and a half kids and a white picket fence and a perfect house in Tampa, which is not realistic, then you will have all of these things. Come on, Being real, y'all. No, it says in all of these things. And I just think we've got to open up our eyes that 2 Corinthians talks about. We live by faith, not by sight. We've got to have some faith eyes again to start seeing some things. We've got to start seeing the victory before the victory happens. We've got to start it. Guys, if, if we don't, who's going to? Who's going to for our kids? Who's going to for the next generation? Who's going to for the government and the leaders and the people in our world? Who's going to see the miracles if we don't? We've got to start seeing not what is, but what could be. I just came to just encourage you. You guys remember when you used to have an imagination back when you were a kid? Any imaginary friends? I won't call you out if you had one. Um, Ephesians 3.20 says, To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, or imagine. Let me pause there. I can imagine some big stuff. And I think we've gotten to this place that we're just not imagining anymore in our prayer life. We're not imagining what would happen if God actually healed us of whatever the doctor said is incurable. And sometimes he heals in heaven and sometimes he heals here. And he's just waiting on you to ask. He's waiting on you to see it. 
He's waiting on you to imagine what would happen if your miracle came. He's waiting on you to imagine what would happen. Just watch your bank account and say, God, I believe for a miracle. God, I believe for a miracle. God, I believe you're a miracle. Let me tell you, John and I went through a season in our life that we should have had no money left. And for some reason, there kept being money in the account, in the account, in the account. And we were not making anything. We did not have a job at this point. This was before Radiant. Just for clarity. We did not have a job at this point. We didn't have any source of income, but we still had bills. We still had stuff. And God was provider because we just had, we did, had nothing else but to have faith. And I want to encourage you, when you feel like you have nothing else, have some faith today. Ask God to do a miracle. Watch what would happen if you do. What would happen if he does what you ask him to do? You really just want to ask him, God, help me make it through the day. And then when you make it through the day, that's the miracle you were hoping for. Well, good. That's 365 days a year. What would happen if you go in and ask God to do something amazing? What would happen if you actually ask God to be God in your life again? I want to encourage you, pray bigger prayers. Don't pray safe. Don't stay on the sidelines. See what you don't see. And once we get to a place that we're seeing this, let me encourage you, we can't just see. We've got to share. Because Joshua couldn't keep these plans to himself. It wouldn't make any sense. When John and I found out we were pregnant, I'm going to put a picture. This is not an announcement. This is when we found out we were pregnant. I know you. August uh, 25th, 2020. We found out we were pregnant. And we were so excited. Right? You're like so excited. And oh my goodness. It's so exciting. And can I tell you what the next most exciting thing was for us? We got so excited to share. We wanted to tell our mom. My mom, who her and her mom had all struggled with being able to have kids. And it was a fear of ours. We could not wait to tell our family and our friends and celebrate. And I think it's crazy to me that we get more excited about things on this side of heaven than sharing on this side of heaven the fact that we know who God is, that he came down, died on the cross for our mistakes, was raised again, and has a plan for your life. Why we got to get excited about sharing that again? We got to get excited about sharing with our friends what could happen if they actually had a relationship with God. That's why I'm passionate about Serve Day, too. Because I think we've got to be a church that could see the city's potential if we started serving and loving and sharing. What would happen if God got a hold of Tampa Bay? What would happen if God got a hold of your workplace? What would happen if God got a hold of people on the streets that we were just saying, hey, God loves you. Here's a water bottle. Hey, I'm showing up to serve just because I want to tell you that God loves you. What would happen if we started sharing what God was showing us in our own prayer time? I think stuff could change. We've got to start sharing. We have the best news of all. And we have to share what we see to those who don't see yet. Sometimes you've got to be the person to stand in the gap and share for those who don't see it yet. Now I've been shouting a bunch. Let's get to the end. So Joshua 6, 20. Let's see what happens. So God gives him a plan. And let me tell you about this plan before we jump in. Um, Military in here. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, So this is God's plan that he tells Joshua, right? You're going to go up, march around the city, come back. Go up, march around the city, come back. Six days of doing this. That's a lot of cardio, first of all. Um, Second of all, on the seventh day, you're going to go up, march around a bunch of times, trumpets are going to sound, and you're going to shout. That's his tactic. Now, again, military, you can correct me, but if you go to, like, war strategy, battle strategy, military tactics, one-on-one, this is not in there, correct? Like, this is crazy. This is insane. And the big part at the end is to, to shout, right? And so Joshua 6, 20, let's see what happens. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. They won. So stop to listen. See what you don't see. And then number three, and this is usually the hardest, is open your mouth. Open your mouth. Proverbs 15 or 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. You know, how many times do we speak death over situations before God ever gets the chance to share the miracle he wants to do? How many times do we go in and we just, we have already spoken death. We've already said we've lost. How many times? How many times have we just decided, you know what, this doesn't feel like it's gonna work out, so... I'm just not even going to pray. I'm not even going to try. And we feel all these things. And we say all these things. And we never give ourselves a chance. 
before it ever happens. It says the power of life and death. Both happen. And a lot of times we tap into this one. We're really good at shutting ourselves down before we even get to start. Before we even get to the start line, we're really good at just saying there's, there's no way. And I think it's time we change that. And I think it's time that people start speaking life over things. And I think it's time that we make our praise louder than our problem. I think it's time that the church and those people who know Jesus start speaking life over situations that look crazy. That we open up our mouth, even when it doesn't make sense. And let me, can I encourage you? Sometimes when you open your mouth, it might not be a shout. It might be a whisper. Sometimes it's you in your bathroom, on the floor, crying because it doesn't make sense. But you can whisper, God, I know you're still God. I know you can give me peace. I know you can give me breakthrough. And you've got to start speaking things that you know are true, even if you don't feel like it. Because let me tell you, you're not going to feel your way into breakthrough. Come on, you're not going to feel your way into generational legacy. You're not going to cha- feel your way into freedom. Because if we're being honest, if I put up here a nice plate with pancakes and the butter all melting and syrup and candied bacon and a cinnamon roll that's warm and has the icing all drizzling down, and on this side I have a bowl of spinach, you ain't going to feel your way into the spinach. And sometimes we need some good calories, so amen. Amen. If you want to feel your way into something, it will always be the easiest option and will never end up getting you where you want to go. But I think it's time we start opening our mouth and declaring who God is, that we have some faith to see the breakthrough God wants to do in our life. And I, whoever has the bricks, you can go ahead and come on up. I want to share a story today. My little girl, I love having a baby because we have sermon illustrations out the wazoo. Our life is not perfect, let me tell you. And if you're waiting for a baby, I'm praying for you because I believe God can do a miracle because he's done it in my life. He's done it in my mom's life. He's done it in my grandma's life. Hopefully my iPad's life. I'm just picking on you, Margo. I love having a baby because it's easy sermon illustration. So one day I'm sitting in my chair and she's like crawling everywhere like a crazy woman um, because she's related to me. And so she gets under my chair and she gets stuck. <laughs> and so she's like hitting the, the legs of the chair and she's getting frustrated, but she's like determined. Like she's gonna get out of this by herself. I was like, okay, well let's wait this out and let's see what happens. And so she's like frustrated, but she's like, I can, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And so she's like going, going and like hitting, my chair is like moving everywhere. Like she, and I'm like, girl, you came in, just go out the same way you came in, but it's fine. Like she is stuck. And I think if we're being real today, there's some of us that feel stuck. We got ourselves in a situation and we don't understand it. We're going to build a little wall here. And I want you to label some of these bricks as they're building them, whatever your situation is. Maybe this one's insecurity. Maybe this one's like a body image issue that you don't think you can get over. Maybe this is infertility. Maybe this is issues in your marriage. Maybe this is your past and you think you're too broken, busted, messed up to ever be used by God. Maybe these are fears that you have. Can I tell you, I was bound in fear for years of my life. I had people speak lots of things over me. I was told, you are awkward. You are never gonna speak in front of people. You shouldn't open your mouth. I remember one of my teachers and she meant it as like a really sweet thing to say, but it really messed me up. She said, um, in a parent-teacher conference, she looked at my mom and she was like, I don't even know when Sarah's in the room. She's so quiet and doesn't talk. And it messed me up because then I was afraid to open my mouth fear. Maybe it's stuff people have said over you that you honestly feel like if you're being real, you are hidden behind because you just can't face this thing by yourself. You don't see a way out. Maybe it's an addiction you have. It's a real addiction. Maybe nobody knows you're even battling it. Maybe it's anxiety and depression. Maybe this is a doctor report that someone gave you and you've been defined by it for months because you see no way out. Just like my baby girl saw no way out. She was stuck under my chair. And then my daughter decided to do something. She said, mama, 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 mama. And that's the only word she knows, mama, dada, and cheese. Because she's she's a girl like me. And of course, when she said mama, I went down, picked her up, and got her out of the situation that didn't make any sense. I was available the entire time, the minute she opened her mouth and asked for help. I was right there. I had the answer. I could pick her up. She didn't even have to do it herself. I was willing to do the thing. 
And I think we need some people. Can we just take a second? I don't think, maybe some of y'all had some dad issues and I, I get it. Maybe you had some mama issues and I get it. Maybe you've had some past issues and I get it. Maybe you've had some church issues and I get it. But it's time for your breakthrough. It's time for you to, just like my daughter said, mama, mama, it's time for you to say, God, I know you are here. I know this seems scary, but I know you're bigger. I know this seems impossible, but I know you're stronger. I know this diagnosis seems scary and forever, but you're my healer. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to open my mouth. And can I tell you, what will happen is God will begin to knock over every situation in your life. So real quick, we're going to sing this song out. But before we do, I want you to stand up. I want you to take a battle position because we've been sitting down for too long and the enemy's got us fearful for too long. So we're going to stand and we're going to shout the name of Jesus and we're going to watch as God does a miracle. We're going to watch as he is God. So if you're comfortable, would you lift your hands and shout out the victory that God has for us? Shout Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. Jesus for my You might go home and that wall might still feel like it's there. And sometimes it's going to take weeks, months, years to find what you, the breakthrough that you need. But don't you think that God is not working on it? And don't you think that God can't? You keep opening your mouth and you might go home and you might feel like I can only whisper. I don't have enough left. That's fine. Open your mouth and watch what God wants to do. You don't need the whole team. You don't need the lights. You've got God. So I want to take a second with every eye closed, head bowed. There's two groups of people in the room I want to talk to. The first group is you have a very real wall in front of you and you do not know how you're going to make it through. You need God. You need God for the breakthrough. You need God for the answer. You need God for the cure, for the healing. Whatever it is, you have a very real thing in front of you that this whole time that's been your thing. I want to pray for you. If you would, could you raise your hand? Can I see who I'm praying for today? And if we're being honest, it's a lot of us. We've all got something. Go ahead, raise your hand. It's not for me. You're doing exactly what my baby girl did when she raised up her hand and said, Mama, Mama. You're just telling God, I need you. And I want to pray for you. So let's pray. God, you are good. You are able. You are deliverer. You are healer. You are mighty. You are strong. You are able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. So in this moment, we ask that you would help us have breakthrough. We ask that you would knock down that wall that is in front of us. We ask that you would be God. We ask for a miracle because you are a miracle working God. We ask for healing. We ask for breakthrough, provision, provider. God, we ask for whatever it is that we know you can do to do it because we have faith to see that, that we can make it to the other side. We have faith to know that you are able to do it. And so God, we ask and I pray that you would give your people the strength to keep opening their mouth, the strength to keep asking and keep asking and watch as miracles come in Jesus' name. Now there's a second group of people in the room I wanna talk to. You can keep your eyes closed and those of you that are in here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you've never given your life to him, maybe you're checking out church for a while or for the first time and, and you just, you want that, you want that today. You wanna to begin a relationship with Jesus for the very first time. I wanna pray for you. I wanna lead you in a prayer because God sent his son Jesus 
on this earth to die. And when he died, he picked up all of your mistakes, your issues, your brokenness, your past. He paid the price for all of it on the cross and was raised again on the third day because he wants to give you freedom. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to forgive your past, your present, your future. And so if that's you in the room and you want to start a relationship with Jesus for the first time, I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, just raise your hand, wave it at me. It's just so I know who I'm praying for. You're just telling me who to pray for and showing God that you're here. So if that's you, you want to start a relationship with Jesus, raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three, all over this room. I see you. I see you. I see you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say a prayer. We're going to repeat it back together. All of us will repeat it together just so we're standing with you and just make it your prayer between you and God. This is your day. This is your moment. So y'all, let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus. Oh, come on. Dear Jesus, today. I make a decision to follow you. Forgive me of my past, my present, and my future. Today, I commit my life to you. Help me follow you all the rest of my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give it up for those who just made that decision.